Welcome to Tickmill's Weekly Market Outlook for week commencing the 16th of December with me, Patrick Munnerly. In the US, the main releases over the coming week will be Friday's round of figures for the Fed's preferred inflation gauge, as well as spending and income growth during November. A soft retail sales control group could pretend a soft reading for overall consumer spending, unless components under sampled by retail sales surprise higher. Income gains should remain solid given recent growth in payrolls, and if that is paired with relatively soft consumption, then the saving rate might pop higher after dipping to just 7.8% prior month. For inflation, the key will be the extent to which core PCE continues to track core CPI. Given core CPI was unchanged at 2.3% year over year in November, a constant spread could imply that core PCE will itself remain unchanged at 1.6% year over year, albeit there are different methodologies that might pose slightly more downside risk to the core PCE measure, such as a higher weight on soft medical care. A round of industrial readings will include the start of another batch of regional manufacturing reports on the way to the next ISM manufacturing report. Empire and market PMI gauges will start it all off on Monday, and then the volatile Philly Fed metric is slotted in for Thursday. Industrial output might post a better print off of a miserable prior month, but the trend is likely to remain weak. Fed speech should be fairly light, especially after Fed Chair Powell's recent press conference. Governor Brainard speaks on Wednesday, voting regional presidents Rosengren Tuesday and Evans on Wednesday. From a technical perspective, the dollar index had a torrid week, uh, testing down to trendline support in the 9660 area, and with the announcement of the China and US phase one trade deal, uh, the dollar recovered strongly on Friday. Looking now for uh, symmetry swing resistance back up at the monthly pivot at 97.98, so the 98 area, and the new descending trend line resistance to hold any upside that we may see this week. And then we should see a further leg of downside to ultimately test the 96 level. Now, if we do get any close above the trendline resistance and the symmetry swing resistance at 98, then we may see a further push higher to test up towards the 99 level. Whilst we're talking about the dollar, let's check in with gold. Gold, as highlighted in my chart of the day, appears to be putting in a bullish reversal pattern similar to that that we witnessed in the spring of this year. If we can break above the 1486, 1490 resistance, then we could see another leg higher in gold to test up towards the 1580. However, any close below the 1430 area would negate this bullish view and suggest we do further work to the downside, testing bids back down to the 1400 level. In Canada, manufacturing sales in October will be reported on Tuesday. The drivers are mixed but the market senses that there's likely a modest gain with soft confidence of plus 0.3% month over month. Wednesday, we'll see CPI figures for November, could see headline leap forward, but with core readings remaining better behaved around 2% to 2.1% year over year. The reasons behind a potential surge in headline inflation would likely be ignored by the Bank of Canada that anticipate an acceleration of 2.1% year over year, in Q4 in the October monetary policy meeting. Their forecasts seem to be right in the ballpark so far. The week is wrapped up by Friday's retail sales with markets expecting a robust reading. From a technical perspective, the dollar Canadian is back retesting support at the, 30, the 131.50 area. If this area can attract buyers, then there is still the potential that we put in a double bottom here and actually trade up to test the, uh, the equidistant swing target at 134 and also the major descending trend line resistance. However, a failure to hold 131.50 will suggest that we are going to test back down to support at the 130.45 area. In the Eurozone, a round of European sentiment surveys will further inform Q4 growth tracking and the transition into 2020 Q1. PMIs for December are due for release on Monday, and then German IFO business confidence will be released on Wednesday. 
It remains uncertain whether a turning point in global PMIs is upon us. Some readings have slightly improved of late, but not all. Some of the improvements might yet prove to be transitory given stocking activity ahead of tariff uncertainties in recent months. From a technical perspective, the euro dollar broke higher to test uh, offers at the 112 area, and we did see a sharp reversal Friday. However, we didn't close below the short term volume weighted average price, so we may well grind higher this week to retest that 112 and then up towards the equidistant swing objective at 112.50. However, if we can't catch a bid early in the week, then I look for a retest of the monthly pivot down to the 110.60 area, where I, once again I'd be looking for buyers to potentially step in and look for that ultimate upside objective of 112.50, 112.70. Only a failure below 110.50 would delay this upside objective, suggesting a return to test bids below 110. Whilst we're talking about the euro, let's check in with the DAX. The DAX continue to grind higher. We did break through the prior swing highs at the 13,376 level, fell short though of the target at 13,650. Again, the reversal on Friday wasn't sufficient to close below the near-term volume weighted average price, so we may see prices grind higher to ultimately test that 13,660 level. However, I do know the, the, the momentum divergence that we're witnessing, and so I'm looking for any bearish reversals that we do see that close below the VWAP to ultimately give us a signal that we're likely to see a deeper correction back down to test support at the 12,600 level. In the UK, the aftermath of the election will continue to reverberate as preparations to exit the EU swing into high gear. And key decisions need to be made, including central bank leadership. Mark Carney's second to last policy meeting will transition towards incorporating tightening scenarios. The Bank of England is widely expected to leave policy variables intact, including the bank rate at 0.75% next Thursday. Path to the meeting will also bring out the Financial Stability Report on Monday and stress test results that same day to be followed by the biennial report on climate change scenarios due on Wednesday. We may well also learn who will replace Mark Carney as Governor of the BAE when he departs at the end of next month. The Conservative strong majority feeds reinforced expectations that they will announce his successor next week as the window ahead of the first day of the job is fast approaching. From a technical perspective, the sterling dollar spiked higher to test through, uh, to, to break through the prior resistance at the 134 area and test offers at 135. These saw prices close below key resistance on Friday, and we'll see now how the price, how traders respond at the beginning of the week. If we do not get a close above this prior resistance at the 133.80 area, that would suggest we likely see a retest lower down to trendline support at the 131.30 area. However, if we do get a close above the 133.80, that should inject further upside momentum into the sterling, and we'd look for a test higher up towards 136. The Bank of Japan is expected to stay on hold next Thursday. Even though the October sales tax hike weakened conditions, the BOJ may be more encouraged by the addition of material amount of fiscal stimulus. The Abe government introduced about $240 billion of measures earlier this month. Japan releases another inflation report later that day and expected to show only a slight improvement in core inflation to around half a percent year over year. From a technical perspective, the dollar yen tested up to the prior swing highs at the 109.60, but we do note this momentum divergence appears to be weighing on prices. Any close back below the 109 level will be a bearish development, suggesting that we test down into projected trendline support at the 107.85 area. However, if we can get a close above the prior swing highs at 109.60, that will open a test of the equidistant swing target up at 110.50. Finally, in Australia, after dropping 19,000 jobs in October, Australia's job report for November, released Wednesday, will take on elevated significance ahead of the next RBA decision in the new year. That was the first time jobs were lost since May of 2018, and the biggest decline since August 2016. One possibility is that the economy overshot on job growth er earlier and suffered a confidence blow in the heightened trade concerns. From a technical perspective, the Australian dollar retested swing highs at the 69.30, but we did see a bearish key day reversal on Friday. 
However, as with other pairs, we didn't get that close below the near-term volume weighted average price, but I would like to see to confirm this potential double top, but we do have significant momentum divergence. If we hold the current highs, then I would anticipate we retest the 68.20 area as support, ultimately en route to test the equidistant swing objective up at 70 cents. Only a break back below the 67.50 area would concern the bullish view, suggesting a return to test year-to-date lows at 66.70. And that concludes the weekly market outlook for week commencing December the 16th.